Question 1. A patient with a history of COPD has an oxygen saturation of 88%. Which intervention should the nurse prioritize? A. Increase the patient's oxygen flow rate. B. Encourage the patient to use a pursed lip breathing technique. C. Administer a bronchodilator nebulizer treatment. D. Reposition the patient in a high Fowler's position. Answer. B. Encourage the patient to use a pursed lip breathing technique. Rationale. Pursed lip breathing helps to improve oxygenation in COPD patients by promoting optimal lung expansion. Question 2. A patient has been diagnosed with pleural effusion. Which symptom is most characteristic of this condition? A. Wheezing. B. Hemoptysis. C. Dyspnea. D. Cyanosis. Answer. C. Dyspnea. Rationale. Pleural effusion refers to fluid buildup in the pleural space. This can cause difficulty in breathing or dyspnea. Question 3. Which instruction is important for a patient receiving a TB skin test? A. Avoid scratching the test site. B. Return in 48 to 72 hours for reading. C. Keep the site covered with a bandage. D. Wash the site with soap and water. Answer, B. Return in 48 to 72 hours for reading. Rationale. The results of a TB skin test should be read within 48 to 72 hours, but preferably around 48 hours after administration. Question 4. Which of the following is a late sign of hypoxia? A. Tachycardia. B. Cyanosis. C. Restlessness. D. Dyspnea. Answer, B. Cyanosis. Rationale. Cyanosis is a late sign of hypoxia. Early signs include restlessness, tachycardia, and dyspnea. Question 5. A patient is scheduled for a thoracentesis. In which position should the nurse place the patient? A. Lying flat on the back. B. Sitting upright and leaning forward. C. In Trendelenburg position. D. In left lateral decubitus position. Answer, B. Sitting upright and leaning forward. Rationale. This position allows for the best access to the pleural space and minimizes risk of injury to lung tissue. Question 6. For which patient would the nurse anticipate administering a bronchodilator? A. A patient with a pneumothorax. B. A patient with a pulmonary embolism. C. A patient with asthma. D. A patient with pleural effusion. Answer, C. A patient with asthma. Rationale. Bronchodilators are primarily used for conditions like asthma where there is bronchoconstriction. Question 7. A nurse assesses the respiratory rate of an adult patient and counts 28 breaths per minute. The nurse should interpret this as A. Normal. B. Bradypnea. C. Tachypnea. D. Hypernia. Answer, C. Tachypnea. Rationale. A respiratory rate above 20 breaths per minute in adults is considered tachypnea. Question 8. Which condition can result from a long-term deficiency in alpha-1 antitrypsin? A. Asthma. B. Bronchitis. C. Emphysema. D. Lung cancer. Answer, C. Emphysema. Rationale. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can lead to emphysema, 
as this protein protects the lungs from neutrophil elastase. Question 9. A nurse is teaching a patient with chronic bronchitis about the importance of fluid intake. What rationale should the nurse include in the teaching? A. Increased fluids can help thin secretions for easier expectoration. B. Fluids will help decrease your cough reflex. C. Drinking more fluids will reduce your risk of pneumonia. D. Fluids will prevent dehydration from frequent coughing. Answer A. Increased fluids can help thin secretions for easier expectoration. Rationale Increased fluid intake can help to thin mucus in the bronchi, making it easier to cough up. Question 10. A nurse is teaching a patient about the proper use of a metered dose inhaler. Which statement by the patient indicates a need for further teaching? A. I will shake the inhaler before use. B. I'll exhale fully before using the inhaler. C. I will hold my breath for a few seconds after inhaling the medication. D. I'll breathe in quickly when activating the inhaler. Answer. D. I'll breathe in quickly when activating the inhaler. Rationale. The patient should breathe in slowly and deeply when activating the inhaler to ensure the medication reaches deep into the lungs. Question 11. Which finding would be of most concern to a nurse assessing a patient 24 hours after a lobectomy? A. Slight bloody drainage from the chest tube. B. A decrease in breath sounds on the affected side. C. A temperature of 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit 37.5 degrees Celsius. D. Pain at the incision site rated 6 on a scale of 10. Answer. B. A decrease in breath sounds on the affected side. Rationale. A decrease in breath sounds might indicate a complication such as atelectasis, pleural effusion, or pneumothorax. Question 12. A nurse is providing discharge teaching for a patient who had a spontaneous pneumothorax. Which statement by the patient indicates understanding? A. I should avoid flying for at least a month. B. I can resume smoking in small amounts after a week. C. I should expect to feel severe pain for several days. D. It's safe for me to start weightlifting right away. Answer. A. I should avoid flying for at least a month. Rationale. Changes in atmospheric pressure during flight can exacerbate or cause recurrence of a pneumothorax. Question 13. Which action is most crucial for a nurse to take when suctioning a tracheostomy? A. Suction for a maximum of 20 seconds. B. Preoxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen. C. Suction while inserting and removing the catheter. D. Apply suction only when withdrawing the catheter. Answer, D. Apply suction only when withdrawing the catheter. Rationale. Suction should be applied only when withdrawing the catheter to prevent trauma to the mucosal lining. Question 14. A patient with tuberculosis asks the nurse how long they need to be on medication. The nurse should reply. A. For a week. B. For a month. C. For six months to a year. D. For the rest of your life. Answer, C. For six months to a year. Rationale. The standard treatment for active tuberculosis usually lasts for six to nine months, depending on the specific medications and the patient's response to them. Question 15. A nurse should recognize which of the following as a risk factor for lung cancer. A. A diet high in fiber. B. Exposure to radon. C. History of pneumonia. D. 
Use of antihistamines. Answer, B. Exposure to radon. Rationale. Radon exposure is a well-known risk factor for the development of lung cancer. Question 16. A patient presents to the ER with sudden onset of sharp, stabbing chest pain that worsens with deep breathing. What condition should the nurse suspect? A. Asthma. B. Pleurisy. C. Bronchitis. D. Pneumonia. Answer, B. Pleurisy. Rationale. Pleurisy involves inflammation of the pleura and can cause sharp, stabbing chest pain that intensifies with deep breathing. Question 17. What should the nurse monitor in a patient diagnosed with pulmonary edema? A. Increased urine output. B. Barrel chest. C. Pink frothy sputum. D. Wheezing. Answer, C. Pink frothy sputum. Rationale. Pink frothy sputum is a classic sign of pulmonary edema due to the presence of blood-tinged fluid in the alveoli. Question 18. A nurse is reviewing a patient's arterial blood gases, ABGs, which result indicates respiratory acidosis. A. pH 7.48, PACO2 is 32 mm of mercury. B. pH 7.30, PACO2 is 50 mm of mercury. C. pH 7.44, PACO2 is 40 mm of mercury. D. pH 7.50, PACO2 is 28 mm of mercury. Answer, B. pH 7.30, PACO2 is 50 mm of mercury. Rationale, respiratory acidosis is characterized by a decreased pH and elevated PaCO2. Question 19. Which technique should a nurse use when performing percussion during a respiratory assessment? A. Striking the chest directly with the palm. B. Using the fingertips to tap the chest wall. C. Striking the back with a closed fist. D. Using the middle finger of one hand to strike the middle finger of the other hand against the chest. Answer, D. Using the middle finger of one hand to strike the middle finger of the other hand against the chest. Rationale. This technique allows the nurse to evaluate resonance and identify any areas of dullness or hyperresonance. Question 20. Which medication would be most appropriate for a patient with an acute asthma attack? A. Ipratropium bromide. B. Fluticasone. C. Albuterol. D. Montelicast. Answer, C. Albuterol. Rationale. Albuterol is a short-acting beta agonist and provides rapid bronchodilation making it appropriate for acute asthma exacerbations. Question 21. What recommendation should a nurse give to a patient with COPD to improve their nutritional status? A. Consume large meals three times a day. B. Increase your intake of carbohydrates. C. Eat small, frequent meals throughout the day. D. Limit fluid intake to reduce the sensation of fullness. Answer, C. Eat small, frequent meals throughout the day. Rationale. Small, frequent meals can prevent early satiety and reduce the effort required for breathing during meal times for COPD patients. Question 22. In a patient with suspected pulmonary embolism, which diagnostic test should the nurse anticipate? A. Bronchoscopy. B. Chest X-ray. C. Pulmonary function tests. D. CT pulmonary angiography. Answer, D. 
CT Pulmonary Angiography Rationale CT Pulmonary Angiography is the gold standard for diagnosing pulmonary embolism. Question 23. Which instruction should a nurse emphasize to a patient who recently had a tonsillectomy? A. Gargle with warm salt water. B. Drink hot beverages to soothe your throat. C. Avoid drinking through straws. D. Eat spicy foods to stimulate healing. Answer, C. Avoid drinking through straws. Rationale. Using a straw can cause injury to the surgical site and increase the risk of bleeding. Question 24. A nurse is caring for a patient with atelectasis. What intervention would be appropriate? A. Encourage the use of incentive spirometry. B. Increase fluid intake to thin secretions. C. Administer cough suppressants regularly. D. Initiate bed rest and limit activity. Answer, A. Encourage the use of incentive spirometry. Rationale. Incentive spirometry can help re-expand the alveoli and improve lung function. Question 25. When assessing a patient with a history of smoking, the nurse hears a low-pitched, rumbling sound on expiration. How should the nurse document this finding? A. Wheeze. B. Crackles. C. Ronke. D. Strider. Answer, C. Ronke. Rationale. Ronke are low-pitched, rumbling sounds that are often associated with mucus in the bronchial airways. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.